Sherry, six minutes. Thanks very much. And thanks very much, uh, Mr. McDonald, for, for, for coming along. Um, I'm running out of questions now, being last, so I won't delay uh, too long. Just to go a slightly different angle, as I did actually, indeed, with the, the previous um, witness. Um, do you feel that um, the media chair led the boom? Uh, in what? In what way? Do you mean in terms of the property stuff? Yeah. Property related stuff. Um, I think. I think the media became dependent to a, a very substantial extent on revenue from advertising which was related both to property and recruitment. Um, so, you know, every Friday you'd have, you know, a huge um, supplement with loads of ads for jobs and chief executives and God knows what else. And uh, every Thursday you'd have um, the property supplement. And at one stage, I think the Irish Times property supplement um, was so big that it had, it was in two sections. There was a 12-page opening section and then a 48-page follow-up section. There was so much going on that, you know. So yes, it became a major revenue earner for, for the media, um, um, including the Irish Times. And, um, but as I said, um, you know, whatever about perceptions of, of this leading to a cheerleader situation for the property boom, um, we, we were, if you like, offsetting that, um, any such perception, by carrying relatively critical pieces about how Dublin was developing and, and other issues that were the downsides of the boom, in effect. Would you have been aware, just uh, as an example, it's not you, it's, it's just our journalists aware, or would they be aware of uh, the, the, the amount of advertising that would be coming in from a particular sector like that? Uh, in my experience, and certainly in my own case, I couldn't care less, to be honest. Uh, okay. What the, I mean, okay, yes, it was good that the paper was, was getting revenue, but it wouldn't have influenced me in any way, and I don't think it would have influenced most other journalists in any way. To be in, your, in your experience, was there ever an approach from an editor that you're aware of, either to you or to others, to say, "Can you be a bit more sensitive, or could you try this, or could you do that?" Well, um, I have to be honest and say that um, in 1994, I wrote an article about um, the shoebox, the phenomenon of the shoebox flats that were being built in Dublin. Um, under the Section 23 tax incentive scheme and so on. And I have to say, in all honesty, that it took me a few months to get that into the paper. Um, not into the property supplement, but into the arts um, section, because it was fairly in your face in terms of, of what it was saying about the quality, or rather the lack of quality, of the apartments that were then being, being produced in Dublin. And would you have been aware in your investigative journalism and, and, and writings over the years of, of um, any entertainment of editorial staff by property companies? Oh, yeah. I mean, that happened regularly, you know. But, I mean, the... the would it manifest itself? Well, I mean, it? that you'd be invited to lunches or, you know, launches or whatever, you know. And, uh, Champions League, final? Well, I presume that happened as well, but uh, I personally never got I never got tickets for a match we, we won't be speculative no uh, or, I never got tickets such events, you know I never no. got tickets for a match out of any of them okay um, is there is there a code of ethics uh, uh, in, in, in in the Irish Times for journalists in terms of their interactions with politicians yes. and what what could you outline how it deals with the property sector for example? well I mean uh, the, the Irish Times Ethics Code in the past certainly included a provision uh, that no journalist uh, could accept, um, say, a trip, you know, just a junket, as we would call it in, in journalistic parlance, uh, from, a, from anybody who was not either the government or a government or a government agency. In other words, you didn't do it 
for you didn't take offers from the private sector. Uh, yeah, state sponsored jolly, in other words. It had to be in, in yeah. effect. One minute. In one effect, minute. yes. One minute. Um, were you, would you have been aware of, of any publications? And again, it's not the home in the Irish Times. It's just that they were um, of any collaboration between the publications or publications uh, and the property sector on either housing schemes in terms of shared profit or uh, in terms of um, uh, some other such um, benefit that was going to be derived directly, other than the payment of the fee for the advertising, as a result of um, uh, progress in, in the sales of a development, for example. I'm not personally aware of, of that. Okay, thank you very so. much, Senator. Okay, thanks.